On the EEG board prep website, you can sign up for a free demo account. All you need is an email, and here's a little sneak peek at the full version. So the best part of the app, I think, is the practice quiz, which emulates the ABRA EEG board exam. It has all the same categories, and let's go through a couple of the questions here. We're starting with analysis, and according to ACNS guidelines, what does no PDR suggest? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if the person doesn't have a PDR, that's a bad sign, guys. Yeah, that's one of the first things that you test in an EEG. Eyes closed, relax, test the PDR. Here, an electrographic seizure could either be ictal, postictal, interictal, or preictal. Well, the answer is ictal. Ictal means seizure activity, so during the seizure phase, it's going to be ictal. Now, the next question, ACNS terminology, how would you describe LPDs with a duration of less than 70 milliseconds? Well, anything less than 70 milliseconds is going to be spiky, while anything between 70 and 200 milliseconds, that's going to be sharp. Now, next, ACNS guidelines, what does reverse anterior, posterior, gradient, and the EEG background suggest? That's a bad thing. Suggests abnormal brain function. Usually, the posterior dominant rhythm and the back of the head is going to be higher amplitude than the front of the brain. But if that's reversed, that's a bad sign. Now, next, what does generalized slowing on an EEG suggest? Well, we're going to be looking at diffuse encephalopathy if the patient is awake that is a bad sign. Now, if they're in slow wave sleep, that's a different story. Now that we've done some analysis questions, let's go on to the next section, which is ensure integrity of the data. Now, first, which filter is used to reduce 60 hertz electrical interference? Well, it's going to be the notch filter in America, of course. But if you're in Europe, it's going to be 50 hertz electrical interference. Now, Next question, sh what should be done if all channels show muscle artifact? Well, you're going to want to encourage the patient to relax. You're not going to want to over filter with the low pass filter. The best thing is to just reduce the noise in the first place. Now, what does the ground electrode do? It provides a reference for electrical stability. Very important. Now, next, what causes sweat artifact on an EEG? It's going to be electrolyte movement. It's not muscle contraction, none of that. The movement of the electrolytes in your sweat moving across your skin cause little changes in voltage which affect the EEG and show up as slow waves. Now we'll go over maybe the most important section which is fundamental concepts. What percentage of the head circumference is used to place T5 and T6 in the 1020 system? Well as you guys know when you're measuring from T3 to T5 it's going to be a 10% mark. Same thing with the other side of the head. Pretty simple if you know your measurements. Why is the head circumference measured through FPZ and OZ marks in the 1020 system? Now, that's a good question because we don't place wires at FPZ or OZ, but they are necessary to help us determine the true FP1, FP2, O1, and O2 positions. Along with those, it's also necessary for the rest of the circumference electrodes. What is the primary brain state associated with the presence of a posterior dominant rhythm? Well, that's going to be relaxed wakefulness, with the patient's eyes closed, you're going to see between 8 and 13 waves per second in the back of the head, posterior dominant rhythm. Now, what is the role of the preauricular points in the 1020 system? Well, those are by the ears. You measure from side to side, and that's going to give you landmarks to help determine your T3, T4, and the true CZ position. Now, in what stage of sleep are slow waves observed in the EEG? Well, it's going to be in deep non-REM sleep also known as stage three sleep or slow wave sleep. It has a couple different names, but you got to learn all the different names so you can get the question right no matter what they ask you on the EEG board exam. Now, what should be done for a sleep-deprived EEG? We're going to want to encourage the patient to fall asleep after our activation procedures, giving us the highest chance of recording some epileptic activity for the doctor. Now, what do we do if a patient with a history of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures starts seizing before you apply all the electrodes? I've actually had this happen to me before. What you're going to want to do in this case is turn on the video camera, start the study. Even though electrodes aren't on, the video is valuable information for the doctor, especially in psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Now, if the patient has a history of panic attacks, you're going to want to ease them into the study, work with them so that they're not overwhelmed because it is a big thing having all these electrodes hooked up to you. What should be checked before EEG placement? Well, you're going to want to make sure there was no recent surgeries 
anything like that. And if so, mark it on the study for the doctor. That's why I always check the patient history and look at that. This question is about patient history. So this way we'll have any medications that affect the EEG or any recent surgeries documented for the doctor so they know what kind of an EEG they're reading because medications and surgery can cause big changes. What do we do in an adult patient with altered mental status who is uncooperative? We'll try our best to calm them, explain how important the test is, and if they're still not cooperative, we'll let the neurologist know and they can decide either to give sedation or cancel the test. What do we do if a patient shows signs of a seizure during the recording? Even if it's at the end of the recording, I would continue it, annotate, and ensure the patient is safe. That way we don't miss anything. I've had people stop the recording in the middle of a seizure. Bad idea, guys. What's the purpose of a transverse bipolar montage? While well, a longitudinal bipolar montage will help you compare the left and right hemispheres, this one goes more horizontally. So if you want to look at central sleep structures, transverse montage, pretty good for that. If our patient during our photic stimulation activation procedure is asleep, we're gonna gently wake them up and resume it so we get accurate results. What is the purpose of alternating montages during the recording? Well, it's to give you different perspectives of the brain activity. Like I said before, transverse is good for sleep since sleep structures happen in the middle of the brain and the ideal basic montage is the longitudinal bipolar or double banana, which compares the left and right hemispheres. Lastly, we'll go into waveform identification. What happens in focal brain lesions? We're going to see focal slowing or focal sharp waves, stuff like that in the one specific region where the lesion is. Now, what is the typical appearance of 14 and 6 hertz positive spikes? Well, it's in the name positive spikes, and they're going to be found in the posterior regions of the brain, well, back of the head. What is the typical appearance of a breach rhythm on EEG? That's when you had a recent surgery or a breach in the skull. You're going to see increase in amplitude, increase in sharp waves right over the area of the skull defect. You can also see focal slowing in that area because that's usually where some damaged tissue is. Now, what is the typical appearance of 6 hertz spike and wave, also known as phantom spike and wave? Well, you're going to see it as low amplitude spike and wave bursts. In this case, they're going to be seen at 6 hertz or 6 waves per second. Now, which waveform is associated with subacute sclerosing pancephalitis, SSPE? Yeah, big word, right? So we're going to see periodic complexes, which are just a fancy word for consistent, sharp, or spiky waves happening throughout the EEG every, within every 10 seconds or so. Now, if you have multiple hours to study, you may want to just go through every single question, see how you do. If you get above an 80%, I'm pretty confident that you'll do well on the actual EEG board exam. But if you score, let's say, 50%, 60%, then you'll know what you have to work on. And make note of all the questions that you get wrong and continually improve your EEG knowledge. That's what this app is for, guys. Well, definitely the best part of the app is the practice quiz section since it simulates the EEG board exam. I also have this EEG waveform section that shows all these different patterns that you can see on EEG. And most of them come from actual EEG examples seen in the hospital and the ICU. You can scroll through the patterns like this and when you see one that interests you, you can click on the picture to blow it up. That way you can have a better idea of what the EEG actually looks like because it's kind of small on here. But once you click the picture, you can see, oh, vertex wave. Jared circled them for me. They're at CZ. And oh, would you look at that? There's a video that goes with it too. Pretty awesome, right, guys? So that way you can help teach yourself to read EEGs. And finally, of course, we got flashcards for you guys to look at. Focal slowing. We're going to see localized theta or delta, indicating focal pathology. Trace alter not, that is a neonatal pattern that you got to know for the test. And then time base. I made it myself, took a long time with my dad and my brother. We put it together with my EEG knowledge, my dad and brother's coding knowledge. We've created a masterpiece here. And if you'd like to sign up for free demo questions, just make an account. All you need is an email.